Morning. It's going to be a bit of a, a different one in this video because we got to a thousand subscribers the other day and I promised a few videos ago that we were going to do something to celebrate and we got a Petromax Dutch oven which I've wanted for ages because um, it just looks like a really nice way to bake bread and I saw a video of a guy who baked some bread uh, on a, an open fire and it just looked like the tastiest thing I, I'd ever seen so it's a bit off subject I suppose but I thought it'd be fun and it's a nice way to uh, to mark the occasion it's we've, we're a bit further past a thousand subscribers now but believe it or not this has been the first nice weather day that we've had I mean definitely since the subscriber milestone but um it's just been horrendous weather. Weather we've had storm after storm after storm. We had some damage here, which was rather frustrating, which I needed to fix. The um, solar array fell over several times, and one of the solar panels has smashed and doesn't work. It moved all of my new construction over there, which was that was that was a really really annoying day. Um, so yeah, the, the weather's been bad. Today's the nice nicest day so far. So I thought let's get on and do this video. Um, it's, it was also my birthday the other day and my wife got me the most beautiful axe I think I've ever seen. It's um, Japanese, just take the cover off, but it's like so nice and I've been, I've, obviously I've gone out and just chopped stuff because that's what I did on my birthday, um, but I want to use it, I say properly, we're just going to be chopping some firewood but um, yeah, I get to use that. And then this, it's a bit of an ode to my wife, this, isn't it? Um, this is the knife that my wife got me as an engagement present when we were in Norway and we just got engaged. So I've got these, and I, I barely use it. I've sharpened it when I got it because um, I mean, it was already sharp, but I wanted it deadly sharp. But I, I'm a bit worried about, it's such a special knife to me that I've been too scared to use it, not because I'm worried about damaging it, because I'm quite careful with my tools, but just because, you know, I want to keep it nice and clean. But then I decided, you know what, I'll spend my whole life never using it. Um, so I'm going to try and use it more so that it perhaps becomes, you know, my regular go-to instead of, instead of something that stays in the cupboard, um, never being used. Right, so first job is going to be... I mean, can you see our fireplace, fireplace, stone, stone mound from here? It's down, down there. But I burnt a lot of really bad, bad wood from the barn that we've taken apart. So there's tons of nails. Um, and it's also quite cold and quite wet. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some stones. We'll put that on the bottom so I've got somewhere to light the wood. Uh, then we'll go and gather some firewood, I think. Um, and then we'll get the fire going. I was gonna do the dough myself in this, but I'm no cook, chef, bread maker, baker, there we go, I'm no baker. Uh, so my wife's done that for me this morning. So, but we've gotta wait for it to rise. So we've got 35 minutes before it's proven. And then we've got to shape it into the rolls. And then we've gotta wait another hour. So I thought we'll get the fire going, Dutch oven preheated. Um, and then we'll put the rolls on and Bake them, Dutch oven them, bake them. Yeah, I'll do the axe stuff. Uh, my, wife, my wife does the food stuff. Um, so yeah, hopefully by the time we get to that, the sun might come up above the hill. Just for reference, it's 10, read the time, 25, and the sun is not above the hill yet. Just peeking its head through, you can see it. But this is why solar is pretty disappointing here because we've got to wait till like 11 o'clock before the solar hits, hits there. And you'd be amazed how slow it is. Like you see the sun there, but then on the other side, because this is like we're in a valley, like down and down, you see the sun, oh, you can already see it up there, but then it takes ages to crawl its way down here. And then it's got to crawl its way all the way down to the solar. So um, don't get any power from that till about 11. And then obviously the reverse in the evening, it, it, um, goes down quite early here as well so let's go get some river rocks to make a base 
I'm going to try making the fire with a spark rod, ferro rod. Uh, so we're going to try and do this. I'm probably going to use a chainsaw for some of the, um, some of the firewood, but we're going to try and do the rest of it naturally. Ferro rods aren't natural, you know what I mean. Like, I'm not going to use a blowtorch. I think we'll go through the, um, the new workshop bit. I'll show you that from the inside. As my chainsaw warming up, I've started that just in case we're going to need it. So this is what it's... This is what it's currently like. We had a tidy up around here. This is a bit cleaner now, or tidier. And then this is, this is what it's like from the inside. Let's get a bucket for our firewood. This is that dehumidifier. We've got a different diesel heater here. Got something drying in there. I have to say it does work. It, um, it just needs, I think it does need a bigger fan, which is something, I, um, something I'll be working on. But as a, as a concept, we've got guests coming over this afternoon, so I'm in a bit of a rush trying to get all the washing dry so we can get it away. Um, got the quad bike in there, which is really great. Saves it being outside in, in all the weather. I tidied this side up, but it's just a bit tidier, really, rather than... I'm not the quad bike smoking, surely. Uh, not the quad bike, the chainsaw. No, I think the clouds come down here really low, so... You, uh, it always looks like there's a fire going on, but actually it's just a cloud forming. All right, should we get the stones first or the firewood first? I have to say, most of this looks quite wet. I'm going to be lucky to find some dry stuff. You remember the flood in one of the previous videos that we, um, we went through? It's dumped just a ton of sticks and stuff here, so it's kind of eyeing this up. I mean, kind of an endless supply, isn't there? I'm not sure I'm even going to have to cut much of this. And because it, it hasn't rained in the past few, uh, it feels a bit wet. That's soaking. Yeah, I don't know, perhaps we'll see. Perhaps we'll see on that. I'm gonna get the stones first, we'll get the stones. Let's see if we can get some down here. I've got my eye on this log, that's what I've got the chainsaw for, just to zip it up into a few strips. That big flood also dumped a ton of these mushrooms. It's a good one there. Also dumped a ton of um, river stones in places they weren't before. So looking for a few flat ones. Go over that side. I haven't got all these on. So yeah, like these. That type of one there looks pretty good. You don't want a big one, a big, that's a good one, but a bit big and heavy. Maybe we'll have to have a few smaller ones instead. Nice big fat one. Should we go this way? Oh, that's heavier than it looked. One of the things about living in the highlands that I'm finding is I think the weather's, I don't want to say bad because I don't believe in bad weather. Weather is just weather. 
but let's say 75% of the time it's less preferable. But it's worth it for the 25% that are great because you live here, which means that when it's nice weather, you're already here. If you don't live here and it's like, oh, it's nice weather, let's go to the highlands or let's go to the locks. By the time you get here, it's, the weather changes quite quickly here. So it's, um, it's worth it, worth going through the less preferable weather to get to, to, get to the good stuff because it's, um, when it's good, it's really good. And it's so beautiful here that it just kind of, yeah, it's really, it is worth it for the, for the bad weather. Show you the solar panel that busted. This one just here. Uh, what happened was they, they flew off. I had, I had pinned them on the top, but obviously not, not well enough. Um, and this one came off and, well, they all flopped off actually, but this one flopped off and then another one flopped off and the corner landed on the back there. So it shattered that corner, all the gla glasses shattered and it's bent the frame. I was hoping it might get away with it and it would still work because the glass is shattered, but the panel behind it seems to be okay. Um, but no, it's, uh, it's ruined. I mean, the solar is still operating though. It's not, um, the whole, the whole bank's not broken. It's just that one panel's gone. So I had to unwire it, rewire it up again. Okay. I think we're gonna to have to do some fireplace reorganization because at the minute it's just a big mess. So yeah, I'm gonna make a mini fireplace somewhere in there. Try and deal with a bit less of the um, nails, I think. All right, so in just going up to go and get the spade, clear this up, the chainsaw had set on fire. Yep, like actual flames. So, I'm gonna go up and have a look at that in a minute. I left you guys down here because I th was only expecting going get a spade. Um, so that's a bummer. We won't be doing any chopping of that today. That's something slightly dry to start the fire. Let's go and have a look at this chainsaw. I put it out. It's just, I don't know why, I don't know why it did it. If I'm, um, user error, could be. I'm not, I'm fairly new to chainsaws, if I'm honest. Uh, there's fluid, fluid that I think had come out of it. So there's, you can see it's clearly oil or, or something in there. And it was on fire in there. So is that, is that the chain, chain lubricant? I mean, it, it was on fire, but hopefully the, I mean, the chain and everything, does it still move? No, but it looks like it's the plastic bits that have melted. The actual engine and everything seems to be fine, but that's a bummer. Could you have got an ax? It's my fault for relying on um, modern stuff. Should have just hand chopped it, right? Right, it's now raining, but luckily I had some pre-cut firewood, so I wanted to go and chop some of that up, but at least we've got something. So we haven't got the fire going. Oh, we do, don't we? Bloody chainsaw. Um, we don't have any any fire, but the um, we're at are we at eleven? Five to eleven. So I think we'd probably better get get this bread moved across here. So um, yeah, let's have a go at that, and then that can at least be settling whilst we deal with the other problems which are likely to occur. 
Okay, right. We've got a Dutch oven. We've got stuff in there. What's that? <sighs> got a dough. I'm just going off instructions from my wife. And she said, get some grease poo paper and sort of form it around the Dutch oven. Oh, there's nothing more satisfying, nothing more satisfying than a sharp knife. I mean, it's not really showing it. I think anything can cut greaseproof paper, but. All right, so form it round here, she said, which Would you reckon two layers? That's a bit too long. Now, she said form it, form it around here because you can't leave, uh, you've got to preheat the Dutch oven. So that means that we've got to take the, the rolls back out of here. Squish it down like this. Yeah, kind of. It makes the um, it makes the bread taste a lot nicer if you've got chainsaw oil all over your hands first. It also stops it sticking. So make sure first set fire to your chainsaw, then rub your hands all over the oily bits, um, and then you've got this lovely marinade for your rolls. Don't tell your guests that's what you've done though, because that's the secret sauce. You don't want them all finding that out. All right, dough. Do I need to put something on my hands? I don't know, I reckon you just kind of... <laughs> wow, this is really sticky. <coughs> um, okay. Well, we're going for dough. Oh no, wait, she said flour that. She said flour that. What's the oil for? I don't know. Let's just put some on later. All right, so it's flour. Flour the bottom of that. That's got to be for sticking, I reckon. All right, now we've got, now we've got a roll. Do we want them that big? Do you make roll roll shape or do you just, I don't know. Let's just pretend we're making burgers so I can do that. Two. Oh, it's really sticky. So burger number two. She said, don't let them touch, so I'm spacing them out a little bit. Three. This is the first time I've used this Dutch oven, and um, it's Amy's family who's coming up this afternoon, but my family's coming up for a bit longer next week, um, and I'm hoping to make cheese scones in this, so this is a dry run see how well it how well it goes should we make a big one in the middle yeah i reckon i've missed misspaced this all right one two three four a big one why does that feel like a big one doesn't sound like a good idea let's make two small ones then Right. Is that like rolls? No. Five past eleven. Got to leave it for hour, an hour to prove. And I think 
Okay, the cling film is top right, that's the wrong size. So let's flip the cling film. Let's put the cling film in there so that the greaseproof paper doesn't stick. Let's try lifting this out of here. Put that in there. Right, now that's, I don't know, it's, it's, she said, put clean film on the top. I'm gonna disobey that, and I'm just gonna do that, and then that. Okay, so five past 11, five past 12. She said, don't leave it outside, so we're gonna put that inside, because it's cold outside. I'll, uh, oh, they're not sticky. I wash my hands and then we'll go on with the fire that we want to have. You remember a couple of videos back how much of a torrent this river was? Look, I'm, I can walk across it now. The water was above my head. I'm standing kind of in it, and it was up to up there, raging all the way through here. It's amazing how much difference it makes. I wanted somewhere um, sturdy to cut this, I'm going to make a, a feather stick because I had this lovely piece of fat wood which is just the um, just the sap in a pine tree I wonder if I've chosen the wrong bit no that's good it's just the sap in a pine tree um, that collects at the bottom And you, it's really good for starting fires because it's got loads of um, resin in it. But I can't find it and I don't particularly want to go hunting. Hunting for another bit. So. I'm going to try and make one of these instead. I wonder if I've chosen the wrong bit of wood here. Oh, that's coming off all right. Pretty sure this would be easy without gloves on, but it's really cold. You see these for sale at craft shows. Somebody far better at it, at it than me makes it into like a Christmas tree. But they're supposed to be quite good at starting fires. But as you can tell from the mess I'm making, this is the first one I've ever made. Right, that'll do. Let's go and have a go at lighting it. Kind of ruining my. Perhaps we're going to get another bit of timber to do all this. Okay. I was thinking about it and I was like, oh, if I just had some dry grass or something, but then I realised the workshops had loads of these leaves blowing in because it's autumn. And I reckon they're going to be as good as anything for starting a fire. And today is a day of firsts and I've never used one of these before. Not in anger anyway. How many goes do you reckon? 50? 60? Feels a bit tight on that actually. Maybe I'll take that off so I can get a better swing. Oh, 
Oh, forgot we haven't blessed the fire. Give it a bit of whiskey. This thing's far sparkier than I thought it'd be. And these leaves don't feel completely dry. Oh wait, hang on, birch bark. Yeah, maybe I'll try some of this. Oh, it's all wet. Um, yes, we do, and we can peel it. I've heard that this stuff is amazing at starting fires. Let's see if we can't do that. Coil some of this up. I'm just peeling it off the bits of firewood I've got. Just peel it off like that. It's a big bit, but I don't know if a big bit's good. I mean, that looks like a tinder nest if ever there was one. I don't know if you're supposed to press this in like this, or if you're supposed to fire it from a distance. Oh, it's an ember. Ha ha! Wow, did it. All right, now to keep the thing going. Where are those little ones that we had earlier? Oh, that's working. Look, the feather stick's catching. And the sun's come up, look at that. And the leaves are working to kind of give us a bit of a boost. Sun's come out. I've also been waiting for that to get going, which it certainly looks like it is now. Went to go and check out the chainsaw, and I'm pretty sure it's the chainsaw oil that's dripped. Dripped on what? I don't know, because I'm. There should be designed surely that the chainsaw oil shouldn't catch fire because the exhaust shouldn't be right next to. I don't know if the exhaust is right next to. It. I'm not sure. It's the chainsaw oil that caught fire, but it had only been running for the length of time that I filmed that intro. Well, not even the introduction, I filmed that walkthrough, the workshop, so maybe two minutes. So ironic, really, because that cloud that I said is that, the chainsaw, was the chainsaw. Um, but it's brand new, only, that's the second time I've started it, maybe the third time I've started it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have to have a look, at, perhaps I'm doing a major error, maybe chainsaw users all around the world are saying, no, turn the chainsaw oil off or something, I don't, I don't know. So yeah, it's that that caught fire. Um, so, but we've got some fire here now, that's a winner. Right, so we've got coals, and I've got the Dutch oven, and I need to warm, preheat it, to warm it up, oh that smokes in my eyes. Ugh. I'm gonna open it up a bit, like that. Let's get this in the middle, like that. That's 
pile some of this back up so it doesn't go out. I know you're supposed to have some on the top, um, but I'm gonna try and heat it up first and then I'll put some on the top because otherwise I'll probably have a hard time getting stuff in. Brought the bread over, so it's just a matter of transferring it when we're ready. All right, so it feels, feels hot. Definitely hot. Okay. How do we reckon this bread has turned out? Oh, well, it's more like a tear apart loaf than a, that's kind of cool actually. Some of it stuck. All right, let's try, oh, that smoke. Let's try and lower this in. The edges of this one are certainly going to catch. Ooh, barbecue flavour. Alright, so that's what we've got in there. I'm going to get the lid on. Before all my grease beef paper catches on fire. And then going to add as much of this to the top as I can. I've heard that it's more important to keep the top um, hot than it is the bottom because the bottom's warmed by what's already, um, you know, the ground's hot under there. So it's the top that you've got to keep warm. So I'm actually going to pull most of this up here. Yeah, okay. That's a big one. That was some nice hot bits there. It's 30 minutes to 40 minutes to cook. We're on 10 bars one. So that puts us at 10 to, I've gone past it, damn it. Forty minutes. I have to say I'm not expecting much because this is the first time I've done this and as you can see, it's already been a bit of a chaotic, chaotic morning. Oh, smoke. Not gonna open it till the end either, so I'm not gonna know if it's gone well until it's done. So we'll check back in a 40 minutes. I hope that's worked. This never gets old, given I've been doing it with buckets for ever. Now at least I've got a tap to do it with. All right, I got the timings wrong. It wasn't 40 minutes, it was 25 to 30. So I think we should probably go and have a look. It's also rained on us twice in the time it's been cooking. So let's probably cool it up a bit, although it is still smoking. Oh, there's a bit of flame. There's a bit of flame. Maybe we're all right.
try and do this without getting... Okay, right. So the top, we're done, we know we're done. Let's pull that off. Put that down on the rock. Well. So this is what it looks like. See that? Well, the sides look okay. The bottom though is charred on one side. So we might get some out of this. It just didn't need quite as much time as we thought. We're gonna put it down on the table, I think, so we can disassemble it and have a look, have a look what it actually um, looks like inside. Uh, which was the worst? That side, so this side. Sounds like bread. Oh, the inside looks all right, look at that. Wow. You know what, that's not bad. Not bad at all. I mean, I'd eat that. Not sure I'd buy it from a bakery, but Right, here we go. First go. Weather's cleared up nicely now. Can't blame the rain because if anything that would have cooled it down rather than overdone it. Um, so it probably needs 20 minutes then. 20 minutes. It's fun though. That was fun. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Set a fire to my chainsaw. It freaking rained on me three times. Well, it was, I like the idea of it though. I'd, I'd do it again. Um, yeah, I think you learn, like I've said before, you, you have to do it three times before you get any good at it. So that's the first try. Second try will do less, less badly. And the, the third try, we'll get it, we'll get it, get it going all right. Um, next video to this might be us, I've said it already, I think. I'm going to try and wax a coat. Uh, maybe I'll do my hat and we're going to do a, a different type of wax, like a silicon sealer to a, another waterproof jacket. Um, so we'll do that and maybe it'll be some more of this water supply that we, we're, you know, trying to get plumbed up properly so that it's uh, drinking water. So if you like this kind of content, today's video is a little different, just a bit of a celebration just to mark the occasion. Um, then come join us in the next one. Be nice to see you there. And we'll see you then. Local post office does takeaways and got that last night. So we've got a takeaway curry to eat my Dutch oven bread, which actually, Oh well. <laughs> Let's try a different bit. The bread inside tastes all right. It's just the like. I have to kind of eat the middle bit. This bit's like mm. probably child. It's bread though, and the curry's going to be good because I didn't do that bit.